Good morning from Scott M. E. Zion Church in Wilmington, Delaware. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's listen to the Word of God. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Bible, James 2, 14 through 20. Faith and works. What is the benefit, my fellow believers, if someone claims to have faith but have no good works as evident? Can that kind of faith save him? No, a mere claim of faith is not sufficient. Genuine faith produces good works. If a brother or a sister is without adequate clothing, and lack enough food for each day, and one of you say to them, go in peace with my blessing. Keep warm and feed yourself. But does he not give them the necessities for their body? What good does that do? So, to faith, if, it's not, if it doesn't have works to back it up, is by itself dead, unoperative and ineffective. But someone may say to you, claim, claim to have faith and have good works. Show me faith without works. And if you can, and I will show you my faith by my work, that is by what I do. You believe that God is one. You do well to believe that. The demon also believed that and shudders and bristles and are filled with terror. They have seen him, seen his wealth, but are you willing to recognize you foolish spiritual shadow person, the faith without good works is useless. That is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Let us take it to the throne of grace. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but should have everlasting life. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come unto you once again, thanking you. Thanking you for another day that we've never seen before. Thank you even through this pandemic that we have going on right now, Lord God, we still give you the praise and the honor. For Lord, you are worthy and we are grateful. We just ask you to continue to watch over us, continue to anoint us, continue to bless these leaders of the world and these new leaders that are coming in. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, be with transformation, as well as the members of Scott, as well as our pastor and the First Lady of the Holy. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. 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 What a beautiful word. All of God's word is good. All of God's word. The whole Bible is delicious. Mm. Fill me with your word, Lord. Fill me. Our theme for today is faith without works is dead. So will you listen to our panel members as they explain to you their beliefs and what the word says about faith without works is dead. Sister Stone and Sister Jackson, please. Good morning, everyone. I will be reading James, the fourth chapter and the sixth verse from the New King James Version of the Bible. And it says, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. I like that version, but I also like the amplified version. And it says, but he gives us more and more grace through the power of the Holy Spirit to defy sin and live an obedient life that reflects both our faith and our gratitude for our salvation. Therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud and the haughty but continually gives the gift of grace to the humble who turn away from self-righteousness. Mm. I will be reading from the New International Version, and I'm reading James 4, verses 13 through 17. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why do you not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? Are you a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes? Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast and brag. All such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. Life is so fleeting that we have to depend on God because we don't know whether we're gonna be here tomorrow or what tomorrow may bring, or even if, if there is a tomorrow. Without faith, no one would even make plans for the future since we have no control over tomorrow. It's all in God's hands. Thank you, thank you so much, Sister Stone and Sister Jackson. And now for our gurus, the leaders of the knowledge who know the Bible upside down, backwards and forward. Amen. So wrap this up for us and give us a conclusion as to what you think the word of God is saying to us through those scriptures that were read. Reverend Walsh and Brother Howard, please. Pastor Jones, uh, I'm going to be speaking on James and his faith, how his faith produces humility. I found out that James was a half brother of Jesus. And in John 7 1 5, it says that him and his siblings did not believe who Jesus was. And you can read it for yourself, how they had told Jesus to go on up in Jerusalem and 
how they was going to, God knew that, that they was going to kill Jesus. But after the resurrection, James found out who Jesus was. He seen him for himself. He knew in his heart because of all the miracles that Jesus was doing, who he was, that he was the son of the living God. It shows that James humbled himself from James 1.1. 1, 1. When James said, James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, he humbled himself unto God, knowing that Jesus was the son of God he depended upon God because of John 4, 8. And you can read that also for yourself. James ended up being one of the pillars in Jerusalem church. James showed believers that their obedience to God's moral standards is an indication of a living faith. James was full of grace. He was, at first he was self-righteous, but when he came to find out who Jesus was, he humbled himself unto God, and he became the uh, pillar in Jerusalem. He went out to let the people know who Jesus was. He taught, he told them about the tongue, how the tongue can get you in trouble, how the tongue is a fire when you be talking about the wrong things and how probably how his family did talking about Jesus and humiliating Jesus and not believing who Jesus was but thanks be to God that he humbled himself through the faith that he's after he seen his brother that was the resurrection Christ amen at this time this faith uh, without works is dead. It's so important. We have to be able to have proof of what we say, of what we claim. See, God is not a God to force you to do something. He never was. Amen. Deeper studies will tell you that Moses, when, they, when he went to Mount Sinai, Moses went up the mountain and God asked him to go down and ask the people, will they follow him? Will they agree to his terms? And then he walked all the way down and walked all the way back up and walked all the way down. God kept sending Moses up and down the mountain just to ask them, will they do this? So it's not a force. God is not gonna force things on you. So it's not just as simple as saying, we have faith. Oh, I have faith, I believe in God because we see in the text, even the devils, believe in God. Everybody believes in God. At some point or another, they'll find out. But it's what do you do? Abraham was so important because God was looking around the face of the earth. Just like with Moses later, he had looked first with Abraham. Who on the earth would, would sacrifice their own son? Can you imagine sacrificing your child if somebody asked you to kill them? Kill them for me? Would you do it? Look at yourself mm -hmm. inside. Say, would you do it? Abraham not only said it, but he did it. But he knew the God that he served so well, he knew that he would find a way out. But you have to at least be willing to go through the, the process. That's what made Abraham so great. His faith was proven by his works. So we can't go out and walk by homeless people and not stop and give them money. Hallelujah. We can't, if somebody asks you for a blender, you can't go and say, well, you ain't give me a rake, so I ain't giving you a blender. That's not how it works with God. Ooh. You just keep giving and giving Amen. and giving and forgiving and forgiving Ooh. and forgiving. Praise be to God. Ooh. Faith without works Ooh. is dead. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I'm sure the Lord God Almighty is pleased with our witness and our testimony. Amen. 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 Now, let's see how much we all can know about the word of God. 
We're going to do a little bit of Bible trivia. Is that okay? Now you're on your own. That's what my dad used to tell me when I was getting into trouble. You're on your own. Am I being yes. generous? Okay. You're on your own, so you answer these questions. Are you ready? And whoever comes up with the right answer, we'll see what you know about the Word of God. I know I, we had the uh, information ahead of time, so I know you're all ready for it, right? You're all steady. Ah, I know Reverend's gonna talk about me putting my head <laughs> in the in the <laughs> Trivia Pursuit. You ready? Trivia Pursuit. Are you all ready? ready? Let me get my pencil so I can write down and see who gets the right answers. Okay. And remember the rules. In order to be recognized, you either have to raise your hand on the device, on your computer, on your phone, on Zoom, or call out your name, Val, that you're ready to answer the question. Brother Howard, you know, right? Brother yes. Howard. <laughs> 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 Brother Howard. <laughs> All right, let's have some fun with the Lord. And those of you who are sitting out there in the audience and the congregation, you're a congregation, you're not an audience. This is a congregation because we're worshiping, praising God. All of you in the, join in us and see if you know the answers. See if you know the answers. You can put the answers in the comment section if you know it. Here we go. Whoever's first to raise their hand or to call out their name. Who is called the mother of all living? Valerie. Hey, Cheryl. Cheryl. Um, Eve. All right. I got to put Cheryl down for one, one question, one answer. That's it. Everybody know that the mother of all living is Eve. Question number two, gotta be fast, you gotta be quick, you gotta be quick. Who went to heaven in the chariot of fire? Valerie. Valerie, okay. Elijah. All right, Elijah went to heaven in a chariot of fire. You gotta be fast, you be quick to answer. You better oh hurry my up, goodness. brother. That, that's Sister that Jackson winning. Ah, oh, just that girl. What prophet? Question number three, what prophet took over from Elijah? Adrian. Valerie. Adrian. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, who was first? Adrian? Adrian okay. got it. You know All it. Right. I'm coming after you, Val. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> who was it? Elisha. What's the answer, Brother Howard? Elisha. All right, Elisha. Remember that? At, oh, I, I better stop talking so much. All right. Question number four. Who said, peace, be still? Valerie. Val Valerie, okay, Val. Jesus. All right, Jesus. Woo. Well, I'm not even going to go. Ooh. Val got Ooh. three. Val got three. I want to talk about it, but I don't want to talk about it. Number five, you ready? got to be quick. You got to be fast. What happened at Golgotha? Valerie. Damn. Oh, it's a again. <laughs> Brother, how would that, that woman goes again? <laughs> Crucifixion. All right. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Here we go with question number six. How many stones did Daryl take? Oh, Daryl. Reggie. Who, who answered first? Cheryl. Cheryl said Cheryl, Cheryl got it. Cheryl got it. Okay, how many stones did David take with him when he went? Five. <laughs> Cheryl, all right. All right, Cheryl's on the board. Praise God. Yeah. What are the first, first number question. seven? Number seven. What are the first words spoken by God in the Bible? Valerie. Oh. <clears throat> what was it? Let there be light. All right. And here's wow. the final question. It helps if you were there. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Can oh, we keep it Christian? Can we keep it Christian and classy? Lord have mercy. <laughs> Were you there, Val? <laughs> no, I might have been. <laughs> and number right. eight is who was Simon Peter's brother? Valerie. Oh, Dang, who Val was it? Andrew. All right. Brother Howard, she did it again. Yeah. Listen, I, listen, hold up, time out, time out, time out. Right, I think right. my thing was on mute. I was answering, <laughs> and I think, nah, I'm just joking, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. You got it. You got it. Oh, oh, yeah. That was awesome. I know when I'm whooped, I know when I'm whooped, again. Oh, oh, 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. It's so much. It's so nice to enjoy the love of God, the love of God, and to fellowship one with the other, and to laugh and to enjoy learning about. I love you, Adrian. <laughs> it don't seem Thank like it. You, <laughs> it don't feel. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts. I know this is love. Cousin Howard, you gotta let somebody win all at some time. Ah, man, man, listen, but no. the thing is, I never win. She wins. Every time. Hey, His son wins, wins all the time, though. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I say God wins. It was we go so to God. nice. It was so nice. <laughs> thank you. And now we just want to thank you, everybody, for joining with us with this Sunday School on the Sofa. Sofa. Super Sunday School on the Sofa. The Adult Sunday School with our theme, Faith Without Works is Dead. And just remember, no matter what else you do in life, know that we love you. We'll always love you. But Jesus, the Christ, loves you even more. And now let us lift up our offering and give thanks to God for all he's done for us. And uh, I want to ask you this question as we lift up our offering. And you don't have to answer it. It's rhetorical. You don't have to answer. Think about it. God's goodness. Who holds the earth up? <laughs> If you think about it, ponder it in your heart. Woo! It's a Lord. miracle to put yeah. the world in place. It took another miracle and the stars in space. But when he saved my soul, cleansed and made my, me whole, it took a miracle of love. Amen. 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 Thank you, God, for this offering that we've lifted. You'll see on the screen where it can go, where you can send it, what you will give to God for holding up the earth with his love and his mercy. Amen. Amen. Preach, Amen. Dr. J. You better <laughs> preach. Uh, Amen. <laughs> we ask you to join us on Wednesday mornings at 6 a.m. for prayer. And if you have a prayer request, send it in. Reverend will put the address and his phone number on the screen. Prayer. We were praying for Sister Marie today, and she called and said that everything was all right. Mm. Amen. Amen. The goodness of God is so good. Mm -hmm. Look what prayer will do. Mm -hmm. Prayer request. Join us on Wednesdays for prayer. And now our producer director, who does so much for us, the Reverend Dr. Reginald J. Chandler, Sr., our yes, pastor. Sir. Amen. Remarks, please, Pastor. Thank you very kindly, Dr. Very Jones. Kind. This yes. has been a wonderful session, a wonderful Sunday school. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. The comedy, the teaching, uh, the scriptures that were read has just simply been rich. And I pray that people were as blessed as I, as I, I am on today. May God continue to richly bless the ministry and may everyone continue to be inspired, motivated, and encouraged in the Lord. Thank you so very much for this wonderful time together. To God be the glory. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for allowing us to come together. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your loving kindness. We ask that you will continue to watch over each and every one of us. Help us to learn more about you. Help us to enjoy the teaching. Now, Lord, we pause to use the Sunday school benediction. Sunday school is, over, is over for another day. Another day. Hear us, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, as to thee, as we, to pray. thee we pray. Through the week be, with, be us with us in our work and, our play. Work and play. Make us kind, and, us loving. kind and loving. Help us to obey. To obey. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Bye. And thank so you. Long. We love be you. Be encouraged. Yes. Bye.
God just wants a yes. Hallelujah. Will your spirit still 
say yes. This is the day the Lord hath made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's good to be in your homes on today as we worship God in spirit and in truth. I'm Pastor R.J. Chandler, and I'm broadcasting live from Transformation AME Zion Church, located in the great metropolis of Dover, Delaware. I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, to take off your seatbelt. Come on in. Let's get into worship. Let's magnify the name of the Lord together. Even as we sit on our couches, even as we may be in our kitchens, wherever you may be, come on. And let's just simply say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise your name. You are worthy of our adoration. You're worthy of our praise. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be praised. Somebody ought to say amen. Would you join me as we declare our faith by the use of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thus he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And as I've shared before, it's always important for me to share again that whenever we uh, declare our faith by the use of the Apostles' Creed, when we get to that point where we talk about the Holy Catholic Church, Catholic means universal. So we believe in the universal church, the different branches of the Protestant Reformation and give God the glory for how the Lord is continuing to use the church even when the church is not in the church. We are now going to the streets, we're coming into the homes, we're going outside of the four walls to sharing the good news of Jesus and letting everyone know that the Lord still lives. Amen. Would you travel with me to the Word of God? We're going to go to the book of Exodus chapter number 16. And I'm going to start at verse number one. If you have your Bibles, please join me as I read from the New King James Version. And this is what the Word of God says. And they journeyed from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. On the 15th day of the second month after they departed from the land of Egypt, then the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of the Israel said to them, oh, that we had died at the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the pots of meat and when we ate bread to the full, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you and the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. My word, my, my brothers and sisters, I want to share with you a word that's on my heart on this morning. And I pray that it will bless you. I want to speak to you from the thought, he is more than enough. He's more than enough. Pray with me. You are the potter and I am the clay. Have your way, have your way. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. 
let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Somebody ought to say amen. Here we find Moses and the children of Israel on their way to Mount Sinai to meet God. On their route, the Bible says that they had to go through the wilderness of sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. This wilderness was a place of complaint, ridicule, and scorn. It was a place of fear, pain, and regret. Moses, who was called by God to deliver the Israelites, led them out of Egyptian captivity. He led them on dry ground through the Red Sea in chapter 14. He accrued clout, favor, and prestige with the people. He acclaimed what we call today boss status. He was held in high regard by his peers. He was known as a friend of God. He became the man around his peers. He was revered and respected as such. But even with all of his status, people still complained. Even with all of the niceties of the status of being the deliverer of the Israelites, people still complained. Regardless of his stardom, folks had something to say. He was the pastor. He was the under shepherd of the flock. Everybody knew his purpose. However, the Israelites grew tired of wandering in the wilderness for days, for weeks, for months, for such a long time. They lost their sight of the vision because it became uh, more like empty promises and the prophetic rhetoric and messages of hope fell to deaf ears. In their present condition, they had no money, no resources, no employment, no shelter, and no place of safety. They did not have what they thought that they needed. It kinds of sounds like this COVID-19 pandemic. Like the Israelites, uh, there are many people looking for their big break, uh, a turn of the corner, if you will, a brighter day. Many people are hungry, unemployed, and with no resources, and they keep hearing uh, this preacher say that uh, it's going to be better, it's going to get better, that there's going to be a better day, that the Lord is going to make away. They keep hearing uh, that uh, uh, God is going to step into their situation, but when they look at their situation, they see that it seems bleak. It seems uh, that uh, they don't have uh, what they need to have in order to thrive, in order to make it. Uh, listen, I get it. I understand. I can empathize uh, as a preacher myself, uh, as I receive the word of God, and he says, Reggie, tell them uh, that I'm going to make a way. Uh, I say, Lord, Lord, when are you going to step in? Because people are hurting right now. People are hungry right now. People don't have clothes on their back right now. People are struggling in their homes right now. People are lonely. People are losing their loved ones right now. God, when are you going to step in? And the Lord reveals to me what I share with you from this passage of scripture. I got a question, Lord. What happens when the people of God become numb to the word of God? What happens? How, how do you submit to the spirit of God when you are weakened by the vicissitudes of life? How do you handle the waiting season when it seems like the promise of God will never come? How do I handle it? 
How do I keep preaching that trouble don't last always when everywhere I look, there is trouble? Well, we can find something in this text, my brothers and sisters. Listen, we all in the boat together. Don't ever think that I don't go through. Don't ever think that sometimes I don't doubt. Don't ever think that sometimes fear don't grip my heart. I too struggle with you. I too go through my times, but I praise God that every now and then, when I share my thoughts with the Lord, when I share my complaint with God, when I am honest with the Lord, the Lord always redirects me to his word. He always shows me his word. And I want to suggest to you three things that you can reflect on, uh, upon this scripture that we find in the book of Exodus chapter 16 uh, verses 1 through 4. Number one, he can handle your complaint. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He can handle your complaint. The Bible says that the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The people had enough and they were tired. They said all oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the pots of meat and when we ate bread to the full for you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Perhaps their complaint was legitimate since their resources in food was depleted. Maybe they were well within their right to complain since they did all that they could to be good members of Moses' church. Oh my Lord, here's the good news. God can handle your complaint. Oh, can I say it one more time? I know that some people say that you shouldn't complain to God. But let me tell you, on this day, God can handle your complaint. I praise God that the scripture teaches us that God will hear you. That not only will he hear you, he will do something about it. He told Moses that he would reign down bread from heaven. This bread would be provided daily. In other words, God hears the complaint and moved on their behalf. Oh my God, I feel like shouting already. God heard the complaint of the Israelites as they complained to Moses and God moved on their behalf. I don't know. I know, excuse me, I know that people have said that you should not complain, but like any accident, when you get hurt, you are well within your right to say ouch. Can I say that one more time? If you ever had an accident, if something happened to you, you are well within your right to say ouch. You are well within your right to say this hurts I'm in pain I don't feel well this is too much to bear I don't want to handle this to talk about your pain or trauma is your God given right of expression you need to talk about it you need to let it go because if you don't talk about it, then it's like a tea kettle filled with boiling water. Eventually, you will blow. And I need you to be encouraged this morning. You got to let it go. You got to tell your truth. You got to express it to Almighty God. He can handle your complaint. He can handle your words. He can handle what's going on in your heart. God can handle whatever you bring to the master ask the savior to help you ask him to comfort and heal you he is willing to aid you he will carry you through 
Yeah. He's more than enough. Yeah. First point is that God can handle your complaint. But number two, my brothers and sisters, he's more than what you see. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's more than what you see. The Israelites became blinded by their condition. And you know, we can relate to that. You are When you're inundated, inundated with uh, the same trauma, the same drama, when you see no changes in your life, all you see is nothing but gloom and doom, then your vision changes. Things change. Uh, uh, and, and, and you only see what's in front of you. It begins to blind you. No longer do you want to hear God's word. No longer do you want to hear that you're going to make it out of this thing. For years, you've been struggling with this thing. Listen, I get it. And God understands because the Israelites were in slavery for over 400 years under Egyptian captivity. Then when they came out of Egyptian captivity, they were in the wilderness for a very long time. But yet God will answer the prayers of the righteous. God will meet you. God will meet your family. It's not over just yet. And what I want to encourage you is that uh, he's more than what you can see. The Israelites, they allow their feelings to override the promise of God. It would seem that Starvation was more anticipated and than experience. It, it would seem as if, uh, uh, as they became fearful of what would happen, they thought, I guess, that they wouldn't get fed uh, and that they would die of starvation. Uh, they did not live through weeks and weeks of famine, nor did they see their family and friends die uh, of malnutrition or even have to kill all the livestock for food. Instead, they got blinded by their emotion. They got blinded because they started to feel hungry and anticipated that they would starve. It's not that they were starving up to this point. They've been well fed. It's not that they didn't have what they needed. They had what they needed. But because they ran out, they got fearful and they didn't think that God would step on in. So therefore, they made their complaint to Almighty God. Yeah, they went from singing to complaining very quickly. Isn't that just like us? If that wasn't enough, they recalled the past and remembered their time in Egypt as if it was a good time. Their current view blinded them from seeing God's future for their lives. Be careful, my brothers and sisters, of being a backseat driver. Your view is not the same view as the driver. I will never forget how I felt riding in the third row of a 55 passenger coach bus. When the driver made a sharp turn, I thought to myself, he turned too late. He's going to crash. He doesn't know what he's doing. Little did I know that his view was better than mine. The same is true with God. You don't know what he has in store for you. You don't know how he's going to step into your situation. You see the tree, but he sees the forest. You see a hill, but he sees the mountain. You see the sickness, but he sees the miracle. You see the disappointment, but he sees the learned lesson. You see the back that your back is against the wall, but he sees that is nothing but a setup for your comeback. Somebody say yeah. Number three, he's more than enough. 
the Israelites complained. God hears and then he acts. He provided bread from heaven. It rained down on them. God performed a miracle with bread. There is a reason why John Wesley and the Methodists used bread during the love feast. If you would recall, it was last Sunday that we had our love feast where we celebrated who God is, but we also had a meal together. It was a fellowship meal. Meal. Uh, but please don't ever get it twisted. Uh, that love feast uh, where we celebrate who God is uh, as we lift up the bread takes us back uh, to the book of Exodus uh, when uh, we see that God was able to feed uh, the Israelites every day. Uh, did you hear what I said? Uh, he was able to look after them every day. Uh, God provided for them uh, every day. Uh, he, need, he met their need. Every day he made out a way out of no way. Every day he ministered to the assembly. Every day he made sure that they were well taken care of. Every day. Now I understand why Jesus taught the disciples how he said to them when they pray. He said, Give us this day our daily bread because God will look after you not just on today but he's going to look after you on tomorrow and the day after that whatever you need he can provide it today he can give it to you today he can make a way for you today he can give you the blessing that you stand in need of today you just got to raise your consciousness and recognize who is Jehovah Jireh. It's God our provider. You ought to give God a shout and give him a praise that the Lord will make a way for you. If that wasn't enough, Jesus said that he is the bread. That anyone who is hungry will be satisfied if they go ahead and eat of him. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Thank God for the love feast that we had last week. For it reminded me that God will handle my complaint. That God will hear what I have to say from my heart. That God will tell me that he will be my bridge over troubled water. That he's more than enough. Every time I eat a piece of bread, I get stronger. Bread to me is the same as what spinach is to Popeye. Can I tell you about Popeye? When Bluto, the enemy, has beat up on Popeye, made him feel worthless, he has defeated and broken Popeye. That's when Popeye pulls out the spinach and gains strength. Well, I don't have that green leafy stuff, but I do have the bread, and I'm so glad that he's more than enough. Say yeah. I don't know about you, but the enemy has tried me during this COVID-19. He's tried me through the injustice. He's tried me through the storms. He's tried me through the death and family dysfunction, financial lack, and tried to take me out. But you ought to say like me, I'm still here. I'm still standing. I'm still in my right mind by the grace of God. And you ought to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for hearing my complaint. Thank you for making a way for me. Thank you for answering my prayers. He's in the blessing business. Say yeah. Say yeah. I dare you to prophesy to yourself and say I will make 
make it in my wilderness. I will make it to the promised land. I will come out of COVID better, stronger. Now I understand what Marvin Sapp was talking about when he said, I'm wiser, I'm better, so much better. I'm better. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give him a shout. In the name of the Father, Son, and blessed Holy Ghost. He's more. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. And the Lord is going to see us through. Yeah. Huh, it may look bad. It may look bleak. But like any football team, you got four quarters. And just because quarter number one and quarter number two and maybe quarter number three wasn't that good. But you got a fourth quarter coming up. Here's your comeback, baby. Come on, don't you give in. Don't you throw in the towel. Uh, God hears your complaint. God hears what's happening. God is going to make a way for you. And he's going to give you a blessing daily. Uh, enough to sustain you, to keep you, to preserve you. I want you just to give him a shot. Not until, not after you get the blessing, but I dare you to shout right now. I dare you to go ahead and shout while you're in your living room. Just shout and say, thank you, Lord. Just shout and say, I know you're going to do it, God. Just shout and say, oh, yeah, God, you about to bless me. Just shout and say, yeah, God, I know the devil, he meant it for evil, but you making it for my good. Just shout and praise God for the lesson that you're learning uh, through the midst of the toil uh, and the turmoil. Uh, just give God a shout. Uh, give him a shout and say, I thank you. I praise you. Uh, I dare you. I double dare you. Just break out in a praise. Uh, I don't care if you in your kitchen. It don't matter if you in your bedroom. It don't matter if you in your car. It don't matter where you are. Just shout uh, and say, thank you. Hallelujah. Praise your name. You're worthy. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Oh, yes, you're worthy. I praise you. 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 I praise you, Lord. I, I don't know what tomorrow may hold, but I do know who holds tomorrow. Oh, Lord, you are with me. Ah. In the midst of my adversity, you still with me. Oh, pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you on today that we're able to hear your word. Oh, God, may it touch our hearts. May it prick our hearts. May we be inspired, motivated to a place of praise where we glorify your name on today. God, you're worthy. You have never left us, never forsaken us. You've always been right there you had our back from day one oh people have turned on us people have walked out on us people have left us but you've always been right there oh lord and for that we say thank you if you were with us then you are with us even now help us in the name of jesus to have a spirit of thanksgiving to have a spirit of gratefulness oh god we pray in the name of jesus christ for our family and friends we pray for all of those who are on the front lines providing help providing ministry providing assistance we pray god for our nation and the unrest of racism we pray god that you will use us even as we are sheltering in place use us use us to pray for you said in your word if my people who are called by my name who would humble themselves turn from their wicked ways then i will hear their prayer and will heal their land oh god thank you thank you for being a prayer answering god thank you 
for giving us hope. Thank you for giving us the light so that we may see in this world of darkness. And God, we pray that we will do all that we can to be pleasing in your sight. Help us in our holiness. Help us in our righteous living. Help us in how we behave so that we may glorify you. In the name that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Jesus Christ, Yahshua, the Messiah. Let us all say amen and amen. Perhaps, perhaps you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want you to simply give me the hand. Would you give God your heart? Maybe, just maybe. You've never gone through the process of getting saved. Well, the Bible says in the book of Romans that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that you shall be saved. And so, please, if that's you, I want you to give me a call. My number's on the screen, 302-359-3860. Call me. Send me a text. Put your message in the, in the comment section. And let us walk through this thing called salvation together. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. We don't want to end this broadcast without an opportunity for you to give. Please give. Please share your offering, your tithes, your ministry of kindness. Please share your general claims. Just give unto the Lord. And you can do it in different ways. You can give to Scott or you can give to Transformation. The information is on your screen as you can see. Please just give not grudgingly, but give cheerfully, for the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. Do your best. Do your best. And let God handle the rest. He will bless you as a result of your faithfulness unto him. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we've come to the conclusion of our worship experience, and I thank you for being a part and sharing with us on today. Let us look to the Lord to be dismissed from this place, but never from his place. Let us pray now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, to him have majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth, now, and forevermore. Let the saints of God say amen, amen, amen. Please join us this Wednesday, 6 o'clock in the morning for prayer. And also at 7 o'clock as we continue to tackle the fruit of the Spirit coming from the book of Galatians 5, 22. I hope that you will share with us. Listen, we're having a good time. I pray God's blessings upon you. Have yourself an awesome week.